Good morning, this is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit, and we're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning and evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And we've been working our way through St. Luke's Gospel, and we've really been dealing with the hard lessons the last couple of days that have to do with the passion of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And at the end of yesterday's lesson, we hear that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for our sins. And so we start the lesson here with the last couple of verses today assigned uh, from the end of chapter 23 and then jump into chapter 24, which is the really great news chapter uh, of, of course, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Um, But there's a couple of things I wanna point out about this particular lesson, one from the very beginning of it and another from the end of it. And I'm gonna put the two of them together Uh, as a part of our morning meditation. Uh, Chapter 23, at the end, we hear after Jesus died, uh, there was a man named Joseph, a counselor, uh, and he was a good man and a just, and the same had not consented to the council. Indeed, he was of Arimathea, city of the Jews, and also himself uh, was waiting for the kingdom of God. And he went unto Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. And they took it down and wrapped it in linen and laid it in a sepulcher as hewn in the stone, whereas man had never been uh, before. And the women, of course, were witnesses as well uh, of Joseph of Arimathea putting this uh, body of Jesus into his own tomb, wrapping it in a linen cloth and then placing it in a tomb. So why does that matter? Well, first of all, thanks be to God for Joseph of Arimathea uh, and his good and godly deed to provide the charitable act of providing a place of burial for Jesus. Uh, but the key here is is what's coming up at the end, uh, uh, coming up in verse 11 and 12, uh, and that is as the women go to the tomb for the resurrection, uh, first of all, they go in and, and they're surprised to find, uh, chapter 24, that the stone had been rolled away from the sepulcher. Uh, this is a very large stone. Uh, this, the tombs at this point would have been hewn out in a cave, as it said in the scriptures. Bodies would have been placed in there, a huge stone. Uh, and then after a period of time, when the flesh is assumed to decay off, the bones would be uh, scooped up and put in a box called an ossuarium, uh, and then another body could be placed in there. Well, this is a, a cave that has never had a body in it, so there can't be any sort of worry that the bones that might be in there uh, were actually Jesus's, uh, which wouldn't occur after three days anyway. But also the reality uh, that when they get there, there are these two, what we assume are angels. It's just persons in, in dazzling bright, uh, and they announce, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Uh, and they explain to the women the exact things that Jesus has talked about, about the resurrection. And they realize, wait a second, this is fantastic. And they run off and tell the disciples, they tell the apostles, and they think they're mad. I mean, they should have been looking for the resurrection. Jesus warned them of the resurrection. Uh, and yet they were just so caught up in their grief and their angst and their their sorrow over the death of Jesus and all that they had witnessed in the last couple of days that They just couldn't see clearly that this was in fact the fulfillment and exactly what Jesus promised. And on the third day, he would rise from the dead. And so, of course, Peter rushes back to the tomb. And listen here, listen what it says. Um, uh, And arose Peter and ran to the sepulcher and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed, wondering in itself which this was come to pass. So again, we have the appearance of the linen grave clothes. Why is this important? Why is this mentioned in both the end of chapter 23 and in this portion of the reading in chapter 24? And we will talk in the next couple of days about the appearance of Jesus after the resurrection, how he comes to the disciples uh, and, and explains to them, fulfills in their minds exactly what has happened. But why the mention of the linen grave clothes? Well, Quite frankly, one of the the fallacies that was pointed out uh, and one of the lies that was spread by the authorities was that Jesus' body was stolen. Now, if you were going to steal a body, would you undress it? Would you take the grave wrappings off of it and put them leaving there? Uh, Other gospels talk about that the napkin that was over his face was folded and placed in the corner. I'm pretty sure that if you were hastily going to steal a body, you wouldn't take the time to take the grave clothes that are wrapped around it off and fold them up and leave them there, right? Uh, The reality is, is if you were going to snatch the body, you would sweep it up uh, and you'd be on the quick 
uh, to get out of there before anybody found you. You would go with the grave clothes. So again, it's just one of those little things that you may not look at and you may not notice uh, when you're reading the scriptures, uh, but there, it's a very important part that Joseph of Arthea not only gave this cave, uh, which there had never been a burial in, so there can't be any confusion about a body being in there or not being in there. There are witnesses. The other women were there. They saw him. They participated with him in the putting of the body in the grave. Uh, and of course, now we hear that that burial cloth that he gave them and wrapped him up in uh, was still there. In other words, as he was risen from the dead, uh, he literally unloosed himself from the grave clothes, the things that were wrapped around him, uh, and it was left there in the tomb. One of the beginning of many proofs for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters in Christ, today we start to celebrate the good news that Jesus Christ is in fact risen from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen, the Lord is risen indeed. Every day should be a little bit of Easter in our lives. Uh, and so we celebrate that and we thank God for that in our daily office lesson. And so I hope that today, your Thursday, ends up being a day full of blessings in the Lord. May God bless you.